Hi there, everybody. Thanks for joining us on Facebook. I'm meteorologist Alex Calamia here to give you a rundown on our latest thoughts on Sunday's winter weather threat. Here are a few things you can expect. Definitely everybody in the Midlands is going to be dealing with gusty winds and heavy rain. Now the problem is some of that heavy rain could also translate into icy conditions because temperatures are going to be dropping and staying very cold on Sunday morning. So the greatest risk for this is going to be in the north and western Midlands. Again, we are talking mainly Sunday morning. Now the possibility here is that we also have significant icing in the north and western Midlands with power outages. It's not a guarantee, but that's something that is possible. And we can't rule out some limited snowflakes either mixing in very early in the morning, but more likely if we did see any snowflakes, it would actually come as everything's coming to an end and some of that cooler air is pushing in behind the storm. And I know you're thinking, okay, here's this swirl. It's a big one. It's a big storm system off the coast of, you know, New York to Boston to DC. It's not impacting those cities, it's right off of their coastlines, but that is not the one we are talking about. It's this much weaker, much more disorganized looking area of low pressure. But here's the thing. It will get organized and that is when it's going to start issue. You know, that's when the concerns and issues start. So let's talk about the setup on Saturday evening. What you're going to notice is mainly rain across the deep south. Up above, we have temperatures trending warmer. So when you think of this map in 3D, think Higher up, we have above freezing weather, but then at the surface, colder air is pushing in. So they're kind of working against each other. What does this mean? Well, it definitely doesn't mean snow because you're going to get that snow melting before it touches the ground. And, it, you know, snow doesn't work like that where you get cold weather at the ground and it just magically turns back into a snowflake. Instead, you're going to get sleep pellets or if the cold air is really shallow, it just falls as regular raindrops and then it freezes on contact and covers everything. So that's the issue Sunday morning. By noontime, we're going to start seeing that low pressure push away. We're getting drier air in. So I really think this is mainly an early to mid morning threat. But notice some of that blue wrapping around as promised. That's your potential snowflake opportunity. So maybe we see some flurries, maybe even some minor accumulations in the western half. So I wanted to show you another way of looking up above. This is the more technical way. It's called a model sounding. What you're looking at here in red is a temperature line. So as we climb up on this temperature graph, that's going up higher in the atmosphere. The farther right you are, the warmer it is. So as that line traces to the right, notice that big nose to the right, that big jump as you're climbing up a little bit in the middle of the atmosphere. So that's your warm air, whereas at the surface we have much colder weather. So, you know, this is a perfect setup for an ice event where it doesn't look very pretty and it could be an issue and produce slippery conditions. And that is how we know that everything that happens on Sunday is going to depend on what the thermometer is reading in your backyard, in your town, on your sidewalk. Lots of sunshine today. Very beautiful, as you already know. Uh, tomorrow, not such a pretty looking day, but at least we're not talking rain. No snow across the area either. It's quiet. Temperatures are going to be in the 40s through 5 p.m everywhere in the state except along the coast where you're pushing low 50s and it's overcast. So it's going to be a very wintry looking day. You're going to know that a storm system's coming. You know how some people say that, you know, the sky kind of has a look before bad weather. It's going to look like that on Saturday, but it's not until overnight Saturday that that wet weather arrives. So make sure that you're charging your phones before you go to sleep. Those bricks that go along with the phones and anything else that you want fully charged just in case the power happens to go out in your neighborhood because everybody in pink is raining or sleeting on Sunday morning, but freezing rain on the ground. So it's not going to be a pretty look at all. And the winds are going to be absolutely whipping too. Now, as we head into the mid morning afternoon time, this is a look at 10 AM. You can see that transition into all rain. So if we get that, it'll clear out any of the icing issues in the central Midlands. But the I-20 corridor, I really think could be a dividing line because I feel north and west of the I-20 corridor. So Saluda, Newberry, Fairfield, maybe parts of Kershaw County, you are going to be at that greater risk of longer duration freezing temperatures and you might not entirely get above freezing on Sunday. And if that doesn't happen, everything just stays coated in ice and stays slippery. And that's when things start happening. I mean, the ice isn't going to bother you if you stay at home, but once you start going on the roads, things become very problematic. Things clear out Sunday evening, but look at the blue. That's your potential snowflake. So that's what a lot of people are hoping for is the snow, but 
you're going to have to go upstate. You're going to have to go toward the Charlotte Metro to actually see accumulating snow. Here's a look at some of the model guidance. Uh, extreme big snowfalls in the mountains. Asheville going to get a really big snow out of this. Greenville, eh, you know, you're kind of on the border of big snow and um, medium amount of snow. But here in the Midlands, your better chance if you're going to see snow would be Newberry County toward Fairfield and then points northward toward Chester, toward York. That's where you're going to look at at least some opportunity for snow. Here's the focus I want to show you. Our model output for ice potential, the glaze of ice on everything. It could be a heavy one as you head into Saluda, Newberry, Fairfield County, maybe Kershaw County. You see those areas of red. Now, this is just model guidance. The storm has not even developed yet, so you're going to want to stay tuned with us even throughout the day on Sunday. And the other thing I want you to keep in mind when, in, when and if you're driving on Sunday is that if the roads look good in your neighborhood, sometimes those overpasses can be below freezing, and that's why you have those signs, you know, it freezes here first before it freezes by the ground. So a very good reason to just stay home, even if it looks good in your neighborhood. And guess what? You're going to step right outside Sunday morning and want to go inside with these wind chills. It is going to feel like 11 in Winsboro at 6 a.m. It feels like 15 degrees in Columbia. You're actual temperature is close to freezing, but it feels so much colder than that because winds are gusting up to 30 miles per hour. So even if we didn't get any winter weather like the eastern Midlands toward Orangeburg, I had a question about Clarendon County and Sumter. Your risk is lower for any winter weather there, but you're still dealing with heavy rain that could produce flooding and gusty winds, maybe even some isolated quick thunderstorms. You know, you might hear some rumbles of thunder because this low pressure system is developing right on top of us. These wind chills stay cold all day long. It's going to feel basically like the 20s all day. So impacts north and western Midlands, three o'clock to midday, icy conditions expected, gusts up to 30, feels like 10. That's awful. Some power outages are expected, especially if those conditions develop. Central Midlands, icy conditions are possible. We have gusts up to 30 here too. It feels pretty much just as cold, but there's just a few power outage opportunities. It's not going to be quite as widespread. Plenty of ways you could stay up to date with us, and I think you're going to want to make sure that you know how to digitally stay up to date with us on Sunday, just in case you did lose power on your TV. So online, of course, on Facebook, where you're watching us now, but also I have my own page, meteorologist Alex Calamia, and on Twitter. I'm Alex Calamia WX on Twitter, and I'm going to take a moment to answer some of your questions now also that you're writing below. Susan, what are we seeing? Uh, a lot of people are concerned about the black ice and right. what can they um, expect and, and Right. So let me show you uh, the ice accumulation again, going back to those graphics. I apologize for jumping around. Um, so black ice is really just a film of ice that you can't see. It's called that because it typically happens on pavement, but it's no different really than regular ice, except for the fact of the way that it develops. When you have a very light rain, you don't get those bubbles in those um, you know, little things that develop underneath the ice to kind of tell you that there's ice there. It just sort of looks like the ground is wet, but then it's not actually wet, it's solid. And that's a concern. And that's going to be something that we really just have to watch. I think that's the best reason to avoid being out at all on Sunday morning because we know it's marginal, that risk for black ice. I've also had moments in my life where there's some wetness that's not ice, it's just solid, and then you kind of have like a film of black ice underneath the puddle, and that creates even slicker conditions. So if you do have ice out there in the morning time and then it starts being just a cold, plain rain, well, now you still have that ice from the morning, but in addition to that, you also have a film of rain, so you have even less traction on the roads. I just think Sunday is a really, really good opportunity to stay home. What else are we seeing, Susan? A lot of what you just said, a lot of people want us to stay home and right. Netflix and chill, right. um, but they are concerned about the wind chill factor. How, can it ever affect um, the ground conditions? No, so that's the good thing about wind chill. These temperatures are a formula that has been developed by scientists just to tell us how it feels on our human skin. Uh, it takes into effect a lot of things, but basically when the wind hits your skin, it takes away that warm layer, that protective layer that we have. It doesn't include rain, so rain also makes you feel even colder, but it doesn't affect the ground. If the temperature says 27, it doesn't matter if the wind chill is zero, it's still 27 to nature, you know? So, so this wind chill is not going to make it colder, so to speak. And actually the one thing that this wind will do though is 
provide a fresh source for cold air because freezing rain is a self-destructive process. That's something that I learned in college and it's true. So what happens when rain freezes to the ground, the freezing going from a liquid to a solid, that's actually a warming process. You need heat to be released. So if you didn't have any wind, heat would be released every time a raindrop froze and eventually the temperature would move above freezing. But the wind will help keep that source of cold air in place, so it's going to be harder to get temperatures above freezing. If it's not windy on Sunday, then maybe you get a little freezing rain and then that self-destructive process, the fact that the heating of the raindrops when it freezes, that heat it releases, eventually the temperature would warm up. So that's just sort of like a little bit of a science fact. The reason why we do these Facebook Lives are to give you the details we can't give you during the newscast. So hopefully that kind of just helps you understand a very rare phenomenon because we don't see ice storms very often here. What else are we seeing, Susan? Um, the other question we're getting a lot is, uh, how's it gonna affect um, Orangeburg County right. and uh, maybe down towards the coast? Right, so coast, no issues at all. Actually, it looks like some of the model guidance is quite warm for the coast on Sunday. We'll go back to the hour by hour, but I wanted to show you there is that slim risk still for some icing in Orangeburg County, but certainly if you're gonna go somewhere in the Midlands and not see ice, it would be toward Aiken, Orangeburg, and Clarendon County. Your risk goes up the closer to the I-20 corridor, the Interstate 77 corridor. That's gonna be pretty messy on, on Sunday morning. And I wanna go back to some of the model guidance again. And I apologize for jumping around. We've got to go all the way to Sunday, so we're going to kind of let this play through for a moment, and that way you can see some of these coastal temperatures. So yeah, look at this. Cold to start. This is the coldest model guidance we have. So this is really the worst case scenario would be maybe some freezing conditions in Orangeburg County and for the rest of the Midlands, but it's pretty brief because 48 in Charleston at 10 o'clock in the morning, 53 in Hilton Head, and it looks like even Hilton Head in Charleston could hit 60. So I expect there to be enough mild air toward Orangeburg County that icing is a much lower risk, Susan. Okay, a lot of people are asking about uh, recommendation, uh, should they go out to church on Sunday morning? Right, well, it depends on the time. I mean, I know that there are some churches that have services maybe on Saturday, could be an opportunity to go instead for that. But, uh, you know, with the pandemic, having that option for many people to be virtual, I think that this Sunday would be a good opportunity to take that virtual session and just plan not to go to service. If you're in the Eastern Midlands, you might manage to be like, okay, you know, it's raining outside, temperatures are in the 40s, I feel comfortable doing this. But here's the thing, even with the rain and the gusty winds, there's always still that risk. Slick roads are dangerous on their own, but yeah, I, I think it's a play it by ear situation. You know, if there is no ice on the ground and it's 10 o'clock on Sunday morning, then you're probably okay. I mean, temperatures are not expected to drop. Of course, you want to tune into the latest because things can change, but we are expecting temperatures to really be at their lowest about six o'clock in the morning to 10 o'clock in the morning. So as we go into the afternoon, if you still haven't gotten ice, you're probably not gonna get ice. I hope that helps give a little bit of guidance. It's gonna be one of those things that you wanna plan day of, but if you have to plan ahead of time, just you know, err on the side of caution. I've got one last question. Perfect. Um, they would, uh, people would want to know, uh, should the weather be fine by Monday morning? So it really depends on kind of what the situation is in some of our communities. We could be dealing with power outages and that may take some time to be resolved. But as far as icing goes, or even if we see snowflakes here in the Midlands, everything is going to be gone by the time the sun starts coming up on Monday. Temperatures are only going to be in the 40s Monday afternoon, but it, there's just not going to be enough of anything on the ground for it to stick around for long. So uh, a lot of people have off for Martin Luther King Jr. Day. This is going to be, um, you know, totally gone if people are heading back to work on Tuesday. There's not going to be any sign of anything in the Midlands uh, unless there happens to be power issues that need to be resolved. Uh, that's a really great question and I appreciate everybody for taking the time to talk to us. We're going to continue to be doing these Facebook lives again. I'll just leave my social media websites up just in case you wanted to reach out to us. We also have a Weather Watcher group on Facebook that you should be joining. It's WLTX Weather Watchers and I would love for you to send your pictures there on Sunday if you can do so safely so that way we can share it with people and just let your community know what's happening in your backyard. But for now, I'm News 19 meteorologist Alex Calamia. Have a great weekend and a very safe one.